it's, it's sort of strange, you know. Uh, one is always, I think, intrigued by the idea of the invisible body at a funeral. I've always felt that way. I mean, here they they make all this fuss about the quality of the wood used to build the casket and the casket itself and whether it's got silver embellishments or gold and Lord knows all of this nonsense. And here is a a situation in which very simple hand-woven cloth dyed by, you know, natural uh, juices of berries and whatever, Mm -hmm. or at least that's presumably what it is, as far as I know, is wrapped around the body whether they, I guess they don't even bother to drain the body in the manner that we do here in the West. <coughs> Regardless, they do wrap the body and, and first they, they choose the wood they're going to burn. And it so happened that the time I observed it, uh, they had chosen very beautiful pieces of wood. I'm sure they knew more about how it would burn than I even thought of, but uh, the bark, some of the bark had been stripped from the wood, and some of it was almost white. Some of it was you know, just natural color as we see it and uh, hadn't even been weathered too much. And there were, uh, you know, natural uh, branches and trunks, I guess, of the trees. Several very nice pieces laid close together and I'm sure they know how to build a fire so that the intensity of the heat is, you know, is used to its best advantage. And after that, they lay the body on top of that pile of wood. And in the case I'm speaking of, there were two priests who were also wrapped in uh, cloth of a similar nature to that of the <coughs> the uh, corpse that uh, chanted uh, carried some sort of prayer wheels or whatever they might have been uh, in their hands and they didn't dance a wild mad dragoon or anything of that sort mm-hmm. But they did dance back and forth over the body for several hours, two or three at least that I know of, and Mm -hmm. they may have been at it longer than that. Chanting, never wailing, but chanting. And as the day drew to an end, and the evening shadows began to settle in, they set fire to... This was on a a sort of uh, cement platform right on the edge of the water that had taken on a kind of silver sheen. And of course, the the flow of the water affected the surface. But it was the time when uh, uh, two little goats were sort of butting each other in the head on the edge of a funny little wall along the edge of the water. And the monkeys that were prevalent everywhere had come down, I guess, to drink from the water. (coughs) 
and many of the people that uh, were of that religion, and I'm inclined to think it was Hindu, although I'm not sure of that, uh, you know, that were sort of gathering around, and there were beggars and people of such nature gathering around, and finally it was time to burn the body. And as I said before, they set fire to the body. I guess incense had also been, uh, uh, you know, uh, poured into uh, urns or bowls, or flat bowls at either end of the of the uh, pyre itself. But it was just such a perfect scene and such a a lovely way to bring it all to a close, you know. <clears throat> the feeling of, of peace was in the air. There was no strife or anguish or feeling of anger or disgust or repulsion that I could discern. It seemed just a perfect way to bring it all to a close. And that's the way it was done. Is that the way you'd like it to be done for you? Oh, yes. I, you know, I don't want... It doesn't have to be that formal, even. You know? Where would you like it to take place? Oh, anywhere? Anywhere. It doesn't matter, really. You mean consecrated ground or something? No, like that? no. Uh, I just thought, you know, you might have a favorite place where you might think you might... No, not particular. You know, someplace peaceful and quiet, I guess. Or even in the center of a, you know, a wild scene of some kind.